This video compares two versions of the Three Body Problem TV series, the Netflix version and the Chinese version. This video will be a spoiler-free comparison. If you have watched one of the versions and are debating whether to watch the other, this video can serve as a reference point to see how the versions compare. The Netflix series is titled Three Body Problem, while the Chinese series is titled Three Body, English translation of Sen Ti and they will be referred to as such in the video. We will compare both series based on the following parameters. 1. Closeness to books. 2. Plot and storytelling. 3. Characters. 4. Production, graphics, and CGI. And 5. Cultural representation. Closeness to books. The Chinese version is most similar to the original books, so we will start each parameter with the Chinese version and compare the Netflix version to it. Season 1 of Three Body covers the entirety of the first book and stays very true to the original, with some minor differences in storytelling, characters, and some creative liberties to better visualize text from a book to the screen. A lot of dialogue is actually taken directly from the book. This is probably one of the closest adaptations of book to TV series I have seen out there. The Netflix version obviously internationalizes the books and is an adaptation for English-speaking audiences, but the original books were actually also very international in scope. Season 1 of Three Body Problem encompasses elements from the entire Remembrance of Earth's Past trilogy, not just the first book. But this is done so in a faithful and clever way. But beyond that, the first book's major plot points are all covered in the series, and they are pretty true to the original, but there are character changes and simplifications of plot points. But the major elements included are pretty true to the original books. Plot slash storytelling. In Three Body, the Chinese version, the plot covers the first book of the original series, Three Body Problem. And similarly to the book, pacing might seem slightly slow in the beginning with a focus on mystery, building suspense and intrigue, but in a slow burn way. The core reveals occur toward the middle and end of the 30 episode series, which is pretty short for a Chinese TV show. The series picks up quickly, but enough time is given to characters and the audience to digest what is happening and to dive into the details of different plot lines. The storytelling is pretty similar to how the book tells the story. Netflix's Three Body Problem is an eight episode series, so the plot is fast paced and tight. Mysteries arise quickly and are also solved quickly. The show gets to the heart of the story really early on and establishes the main focus clearly. As mentioned, season one actually introduces plot lines that are beyond the first book, with elements from The Dark Forest and Death's End, but it makes sense because the plot lines included begin concurrently in the books. The storytelling is a sophisticated blend of timelines and sets up the rest of the series in a compelling way. However, it leaves out certain details in the plot to pack everything into these eight episodes. And so, at times, the story might seem a bit fast-paced and confusing for new viewers. Characters In Three Body, we have mainly the same characters as the first book has, with a few new minor characters added mainly to help drive along the story and provide voice to third-person narrations. These characters don't have the most depth to them, but the main characters keep you engaged. There is some setup for the next book in one specific scene, but for the most part, the characters are all pretty similar to their book counterparts. Three Body also notably dives deep into Ye Wen Jie's backstory, which is really important to understanding her actions. A lot happens to her, and there are also a lot of details that come with it. In Three Body Problem, most characters have clear book counterparts even if they seem quite different at first glance. Characters from the second and third books appear and at times are combined with certain characters from the first book or have more fleshed out relationships. By reducing the number of core characters and transforming relationships and connections between characters, there is new room for story continuity and character arcs, as viewers can also feel more invested in recurring characters. Production, Graphics, and CGI Three Body had great production. Sets for historical and contemporary settings are great, and CGI for sci-fi scenes are fantastic. The VR and AR scenes feel like an actual VR or AR game with a digitized reality of the actors and characters, but that is the effect they were going for. The graphics in the game are rendered very well and look very realistic and consistent with the effect they are going for. 
Three Body Problem had great production as well. Sets for historical and contemporary settings are great, with certain UK geographies adding a layer of melancholy to scenes. The VR and AR scenes go for realism instead of digitized realities for character avatars, and the CGI looks quite realistic. The production is sometimes slightly gory, and a few scenes even give horror vibes, but for the most part, it's a very nicely produced sci-fi drama and thriller. Cultural Representation Three Body was produced by China, so everything is culturally and historically accurate. The only thing is, it doesn't really show the violent parts of the Cultural Revolution, likely due to political censorship in China. But otherwise, the aftermath of the Cultural Revolution and criticisms of society, as described in the books, are depicted pretty accurately. The scope of the books was international to begin with, with non-Asian actors playing their corresponding roles, but the story is mainly focused within China. As the scope of the story expands internationally, there will most likely be more international representation and buy-in. Three Body Problem goes international in the Netflix version. The core Chinese backdrop of the Cultural Revolution is there, but the modern segment of the story expands to be set in the UK and the US, with most characters from the West. The Netflix series shows the perspective of what is going on in the rest of the world as the story is unfolding concurrently on the Chinese side. While this expanded geographic perspective is great, we hope that Netflix does not forget about the Asia sphere. It will be great to continue to see plot lines with Asian characters, Asian cities, and places, etc., even as we leave behind the historical catalyst in the book. Final verdict slash thoughts. Both series are great and the story is told in different ways and both bring unique additions to the original books. So if you're a fan of the series, you should watch them both. Both explore largely the same themes but have different methods of execution. If you're dying to better understand the details of certain plot lines and character backstories, the Chinese version is highly recommended. The Chinese version could also bring Bring you closer to the original books if anything was lost in translation so that you can familiarize yourself with the book's original culture. The Netflix version has excellent production, is fast-paced, and sets up the entire series, not just the first book, with characters that you will care about. The scientific explanations are short and sweet, and everything is visualized spectacularly. Both are excellent series worth your time, and if you enjoyed either of them as much as I did, I know you can't wait to see how the rest of the story will translate to TV. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.